Hello everybody. In the last session, we were discussing about the power transformer. We saw that the power transformer could be used for uh, many applications, one of them being isolation, the other is for step up or step down and the third one is for impedance matching. In the case of isolation transformers, the turns ratio is normally kept at 1 is to 1 uh, and the primary side circuit is galvanically isolated from the secondary side circuit, meaning there is no electrical connection between the primary side circuit and the secondary side circuit. The only connection is through the medium of the uh, core of the transformer which is magnetically coupled. In the applications where you want to do step up or step down, apart from achieving isolation, you can also try to achieve compatibility between the voltages and the currents on two sides of the circuits. So, if the primary side of the circuit is at one voltage and the secondary side of the circuit is at another voltage and to achieve compatibility, compatibility between these two circuits, one could use either a step up that is primary is at a lower voltage, secondary is at a higher voltage or a step down primary is at a higher voltage and secondary is at a lower voltage. Correspondingly, the currents will be of the reverse order meaning if the primary voltage is higher, current will be lower compared to the secondary. If the primary voltage is lower, primary current will be higher compared to the with respect to the secondary. Then the third application that we saw that we could put the transformer to good use was in impedance matching. We saw that a real impedance on the secondary side will reflect itself on the primary side as the impedance divided by the turns ratio square or uh, an impedance on the primary side will reflect itself on the secondary side uh, as uh, the impedance into the turns ratio square. Let us just see uh, one more example on the impedance uh, impedance conversion from the primary to the secondary before going further into the uh, aspects of the transformer or the aspects of practical transformers. So, we have a transformer circuit, we have a primary and we have a secondary. There is a core and the secondary winding we have an impedance which could be like that or to make it a bit more complex we could have one more impedance like this like a pi network on the primary side you could have an impedance like this and then of course a source. Now this is called let us say Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. As the turns ratio 1 is to n, the dot polarity is indicating that this portion of the winding is, this portion of the winding is having the same phase as this portion of this terminal of the winding. This is the primary side, we call this one as Eg, let there be a current I1 and then there can be a current I2 through Z2, a current I3 through Z3 which will be the same current which is flowing through Z4 also. Now, if you want to reflect everything onto the primary side, all the things get transformed onto the primary side. Let me also indicate the voltages across each. We have a voltage across Z2 and let us say it is E2. There is a voltage across 
z3 and that is e3 there is a voltage across z4 and that is e4 now now for reflecting i am going to redraw the portion of the circuit of course the primary impedance the primary side impedance will still remain in the primary side without any change and the secondary side impedances can now be put in this let us say black box within this and that would be the reflected impedances reflected impedances and then we have a transformer that is perfectly ideal okay so let us do the reflection one by one and see what happens so we to start with we have the impedance on the secondary side which is like this 1 is to n this is the dot polarity and to start with let us just make a connection between these two this is z1 this is z2 this is z3 this is z4 so now we want to make the impedance conversion from secondary side to the primary side which means you have to divide by n square so the first the z2 will be transferred to the primary side so they can be transferred just as such so z2 is removed from there and it will come in here parallel across that one. now it would have a value z2 by n square it will have a voltage which is e2 by n that will be the voltage which will be flowing and then the current through that you see the current through that is i2 and the current that same current transferred onto the primary side would be n i2 so as such every parameter associated with that is transferred onto the primary side now let us transfer uh, the z3 so z3 is removed <coughs> it is now replaced with a short and then on this side let us make some space for z3 and we have z3 but it is having a value by n square <coughs> now the current through z3 was i3 and reflected onto the primary side the current through this should be n i3 this still remains i1 the voltage across z3 was e3 and reflected onto the primary side it is e3 by n every parameter associated with z3 is reflected in this manner and now we remove z4 from the secondary side and include it on the primary side now it is z4 
by n square whatever the turns ratio. A current of I3 was flowing through that and the same, same current in I3 flows through this. Of course, now there is no current which is flowing here, this current will be equal to 0, this current is equal to 0, let us say, then ideal transformer. <coughs> then what is the voltage across this? The voltage across this Z4 impedance was E4 and it is nothing but E4 by N. You see the impedances all have been shifted, transferred to the primary side and after shifting it is followed by a transformer of ratio 1 is to N and there is a secondary voltage across that. So this is how the impedance from the secondary side can be transferred to the primary side. We could also look at the impedance being transferred from the primary to the secondary side also. So let us take uh, a similar simple circuit. That is we take the same, let me copy this so that it becomes easier for you to understand. So this is the circuit that we have been discussing. Let me paste it here. This is 1 is to n. Now let us transfer this impedance onto the secondary side. So what do you get? So you get there is an EG core secondary windings and there is an impedance which is shifted from the primary to the secondary and the rest remains the same. The secondary side impedances remain the same along with the parameters. So you have Z2, Z3, Z4. <coughs> now Z1 is shifted here so that becomes N square Z1. Remember that when you shift from secondary to the primary, it is divided by n square where 1 is to n is the turns ratio of secondary winding number of turns to the primary winding number of turns. n square Z1 and the current through and the current through the reflected impedance on the secondary side, primary side it was I1 and therefore on the secondary side it is I1 by N. And what is the voltage across Z1? Here the voltage across Z1 was E1 and here it would be E1 into N all parameters now shifted to the secondary side. Now EG could probably also be shifted to the secondary side by multiplying EG by the turns ratio N which means the circuit will look like this. So we have the transformer winding dot polarity core secondary and let us have EG. Now it is EG into N winding N square Z1. The existing secondary impedances Z2, 
z3 z4 you see now here you have i1 is equal to 0. This would be the equivalent circuit as seen on the secondary side and we saw here the equivalent circuit here as seen on the primary side. So, in this way one may choose to reflect the impedances either from the secondary to the primary or primary to the secondary for purpose of uh, doing the analysis depending upon the conveniences of the circuits.